In the days after our town dedicated a war memorial, the biggest thing on my mind was my new horse. Fever and I spent hours at a time all by ourselves. Mom didn't seem to mind either, which sort of surprised me considering how she'd felt about me getting him in the first place. Hi, Ben. I'm taking the eggs to town. For her, the War Memorial dedication had been more than just a final reminder that Dad was never coming back. It had stirred up other emotions and memories long buried or forgotten about. She'd begun to wonder who she was now and where she really belonged. But back then, all I cared about was riding fever. We would gallop, and the sound his hooves made on the hard ground beneath us was loud enough to drown out everything except my imagination. For a 10-year-old boy, it didn't get much better than that. Now, slow down, Harry. All you young fellas, you're always in such a blessed hurry. I'm not Harry, Daddy Johnson. Excuse me. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm Gate. Huh? Oh. Gate Gatenby. Yeah, well, I know that. <laughs> uh, just seeing if he was paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I got two wives buried in there. You know that? Three. Huh? You got three wives in there, Daddy. Hey, oh. No, can't be. No, I ain't been married three times. I didn't know that if I had. I'll show you their graves if you like. Don't tell me who I married. I know. Harriet Clinkerby. <laughs> I married her in... Yeah, I... Uh, not six. <laughs> didn't like her one little bit. <laughs> she... He made a real fine Saskatoon pie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you skin a rabbit faster than you can say, past the peaches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah before that, yeah, before that was Eliza Hipworth. Yeah, I liked her fine. Can't say the same for her pa. <laughs> Nastiest fellow you'd ever meet. Cheated me out of a gold claim, bragged about it, too. My own son-in-law. Gave him his, his first grandchild. <laughs> He never even gave the boy a piece of penny candy. Why, well, damn if you weren't right, Harry. <laughs> there she is now. Who? <laughs> that other wife of mine, Annabelle McTavish. <laughs> You're a real beauty, ain't she? <laughs> That's Julia Osborne, Daddy. Huh? Julia Osborne. Oh, young, young Daniel's wife. That's right. Uh, well, he died, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, uh, sorry to hear it. Uh, he was a good boy. Julia, so good to see you in town. <sighs> it's been a while. Since the War Memorial Dedication Ceremony, to be exact. Has it been that long? <laughs> yes, it has, Albert. Uh, well, if you don't mind my speaking personally, I, <sighs> I think we all have a, a new sense of just how difficult your situation is. I'm fine, Albert. Of course you are, but, well, I can't help but think about how much a woman like yourself must miss the comforts and conveniences of Toronto. Really, Albert, I've lived here for 11 years now. Living, Julia? I'll think about all those, those fancy restaurants, you know, the, the theater, the, the symphony, the opera. Not much of a comparison between that kind of life and one spent constantly watching the weather, cleaning out chicken coops, sweeping prairie dust off the porch. I really don't have any interest in selling the farm. Top dollar, Julia. The kind of money go a long ways, even in Toronto. <laughs> if I change my mind, I'll let you know.
Tell me where he is. my fault. I challenged him to a race. Lazarus, it's not your fault. Can you feel that, kid? Yeah. How about that? Uh-huh. Good. That's good. Jake? I saw my dad. Does that mean I'm gonna die? No, don't talk nonsense, kid. Lazarus, do you think you could lead Fever home for us? Yeah. Okay, you go on and do that. Can that occur? No. I'm gonna carry you. Call Doc Fotheringham. Ben's gonna be fine. You can get to the phone a lot quicker than I can, Julia. Please go. Well, a bump on the head, and he just had the wind knocked out of him. That's all. Wouldn't hurt him any to get some rest, though. Where's Jake, Ma? He'll be up to visit you as soon as he can, okay? Really? There's nothing wrong with them. I'm going to see the doc out, Ben. Okay. You get some rest. fine, Jake. Nothing to fear. Well, I figured that, Doc. Not the first time he took a fall off a horse. Won't be the last. Yeah, well, I'll just get going. I'm off to check on Daddy Johnson. <laughs> he doesn't know I'm coming, of course. I think a man of his age would want to have a phone. <laughs> yeah. The last time I went over to see Daddy, I found him hanging off his drain pipe trying to get on the roof to do some shingling. <laughs> Crazy old fool. He's got no business doing a thing like that. He's 107 years old. Well, that's what I told him. I said, Daddy, next time you have to get on that roof, you use a ladder like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is something, though, Jake. Well, what's that? Uh, Ben's fine, like I said. It's just that well, I'm not so sure about Julia. Well, how do you mean, Doc? Well, I don't like to gossip, you know, but you're as close to family she's got. Still, when it gets down to it, it's no good to speak out of time. Well, just hold on here now, Doc. I don't care which way you're turning. If you're going to speak, you speak. I was with Julia the day she heard her husband had been killed. And I was up all night with her. When Ben had pneumonia so bad, we didn't know if he would make it. But the dedication of the war memorial was the only time I ever saw her cry. So what about it? Well, she's in there crying again.
Your head's still hurting, kid. There's something else bothering you then? Oh, you've fallen off a horse before. I know. But this time was different. This time, Fever had no reason for tossing me. He just did it because he wanted to. Well, you can't let fear have its own way, kid. You can't let it get bigger than it's meant to be. But it's big, Jake. It's real big. I think I'll read my comic now. It's okay with you. Sure. You do that. Ben. Ben. Scared to get back on that horse. Well, then the sooner he does it, the better. It's not that easy. Well, sure it is. Unless you want him to be scared. Of course I don't. I want him to be brave, but I want him to be safe. I want everything for him. Well, I think he's already got everything, Julia. There's a whole other world out there, Jake. With a lot more to offer than Crocus. Well, I guess we got a difference of opinion, you and me. What do you mean? This place, Prairie. I couldn't imagine him anywhere else but here. Difference is, you can. Plenty of stew left. It's on the stove. I think I'll eat in town. Thanks. Hello, sir. Uh, please connect me to Albert Ricky. Albert, uh, it's Julia Osborne. Yes, uh, yes, I am. Um, I think we should have a talk. That's bebop. That is the sound of New York City. It's that Barker fella you made me listen to last week? Parker, Jake. Charlie Parker. He's revolutionizing jazz. Well, all I know is I won't be walking out here humming. For the steak special, Henry. You don't like this stuff, do you? No. 
Hey, how's the kid? No, he's fine. I haven't seen much of you lately. After I finished your fence, I went over to Gatenby's place to work for Albert. <laughs> he thinks he's gonna get 50 bushels an acre out of that place. Oh, Gate never got anywhere near that. Albert doesn't know what he's talking about. And he doesn't want us calling it the Gatenby place anymore. Well, it's been the Gatenby place for 70 years, before Crocus even existed. What's he think, he can get people to change the way they talk just because he feels like it? It's his farm now. Yeah, well, I'm tired of Albert thinking everything's for sale. Almost everything is. Afternoon, Albert. Moses, Jake, this is Jin. Jin Tooby, a new hired hand. Best damn horse trainer in all of Saskatchewan. Can I get any real food in here? Start with one of those. And a lot less of that Chinese music. That's not Chinese. That's Charlie Parker you're listening to, mister. That's the best damn bugle player in all of New Orleans. I don't care where it's from. I know it ain't real music. Well, then you don't know much, do you? Now, Jake. I know horses. That's so. Toothy has got that pit of mine running a quarter mile in 28 seconds. Jake's got the kids, Palomino, doing the quarter in 27. 26. How about we make this more interesting? I got $25, says my pinto can nail a Palomino's hide to a fence post. I got 50. Says it'll be the kid's Palomino that does the nail. Wednesday, 4 o'clock. No spitting. This is a sanitary cafe. No spitting allowed. It's good to me. Yo, chine, say hello. All right, all right, all right. Oh, kai dai, fan tong. We'll go to Tiger Lily. You sure you got $50, Jake? The way Julia's been running the farm since Daniel died, I bet she's not paying you all that much. Of course, once I buy the farm from her, things will be different. I might even give you a raise. See you at the race. Figured I'd come up and say goodnight. Don't think I'll be sleeping much tonight. Do you remember me telling you about old Chief Fly Like an Arrow? Do you mean that Chief you saved from being eaten by a grizzly when you're hardly older than me? That's him. And for thanks, he taught you that secret wild horse language that only Indians ever knew till then? Yep. And because of him teaching it, you're the best horse trainer in all of Saskatchewan, right? Well, I haven't met a better one. Do you think you could use that secret language with fever? You know, to set things straight so he won't ever throw me again. Oh, I can't do that. See, horse has to be free to show how he's feeling, just like you and me. But he's a lot less likely to do it if you're not afraid. Well, what if I can't help it? No problem. You get yourself a totem. A totem? Yep. It's a thing that's got magical powers. It gives protection from what scares you. How could I get one? Well, they just come to you when the moment's right. Old Chief Fly Like an Arrow, he took a claw off of that grizzly that tried to eat him after I killed it, of course. He wore that claw around his neck from that day on, never got attacked by a bear again. 
Could be I'd have some use for a totem like that. Could be. Get some sleep. Fly like an arrow? That's me. Are you real? Well, it depends on what you call real. Well, it's... I don't know. It's something that's really there. Well, how do you know if something is really there? Well, you can see it. Well, can you see me? Sure I can, but maybe I'm dreaming. Well, it could be, or maybe the dream's mine. That'd be strange. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you have a problem, a wise one will come to you in a dream and give you just the help that you need. Really? Mm-hmm. For example, now, I have a problem, and maybe you're in my dream, so maybe you can help me. With what? My son is afraid of horses. Like you're afraid of bears? Who told you that? Jake did. He said you're from that grizzly that was going to have you for lunch. Don't you remember? <clears throat> I'm making this for my son. It looks just like fever. Is it a totem? No, it's a toy. I thought that maybe if he grew to love this, maybe he wouldn't be so afraid of the real thing. Might work. Yeah, I hope so. You know, he's so afraid of riding that nothing can get him back up on a horse. Nothing anyone can say or do. That's too bad. Hmm. Do you ride? Sure, I do. Hmm. Well, maybe you can tell me why you like to ride, just so I could pass it on to my son, of course. Okay, well, when I'm on fever, it's like, well, do you know what the wind is like when it's blowing through a field of wheat? Yeah, I think I do. Tell your son it's like that. Really? Is there anything else? Tell your son if he doesn't get back on a horse, he's missing out on the greatest feeling in the whole wide world. <laughs> I'll do that. Save me from a bear. I'm gonna have a word with that Jake. Morning, Jake. Morning. It's a nice looking giraffe you got there. It's a horse. <laughs> well, I gotta do something. The kid won't get back on his horse. And what's that supposed to do? Well, I told the kid he needs a totem to keep him from getting scared. I'm gonna put this where he can find it. Let him think it came right out of nowhere. Gee, a totem's not a thing. You can't make a totem. It's a spirit. You know better than that. I don't care. I'm taking out a poetry license on this one. A what? Oh, you know, something that's not really the way it is, but that's okay, because it sounds better. Whatever you say, Jake. You want to get started on Daddy's roof? Well, if you want to grab the tools and head on over, I'll join you as soon as I can. Hey, that 
That's a swell camel. Did you carve that? Well, I... It's a horse. You're riding fever to school, are you? Yeah, why wouldn't I? But he was afraid to ride. I, I never said that. Will he be all right? Well, look at him. What do you think? Uh, I was going over to Daddy Johnson's to help Moses get started on his roof there. I was wondering if you had anything you wanted to tell me before I go. No, everything's fine. <laughs> Is that a llama? I'm oh, so glad you could take the time, Julia. I don't really have the time, Albert. I'd just as soon have met you at your shop. I know how busy you are. That's why I thought it'd be nice to give you a little treat. You deserve it, you know. Uh, well, I thought about it, and I, I think your offer to buy the farm makes a lot... Well, could make a lot of sense. Of course it makes sense. Your farm sits right between the gate and the place in the McTavishes, and I own them both. I know it makes sense for you, Albert. I was talking about me. Of course. Why do you want so much land? You live in town and you spend all your time at the dealership. I didn't get rich selling cars, Julia. I'm a wealthy man because I know how to think big. I got a vision. Really? There's a big marketplace out there. I'm talking about the world, Julia. And everyone in it needs bread. Well, you know who's going to give it to them? Not little family farms like yours. No, ma'am. They're going the way of the buffalo herds. You're not a wheat farmer, Albert. No. I'm a businessman. That's the future of farming. Big business. I get myself a manager to actually run the place. The only thing I have to reap is the reward. Our farm has been in Daniel's family since 1872. You gotta think about the future, Julia, not the past. You wanna spend the rest of your life mucking out chicken coops? Well, what are you gonna do with the livestock and the, and the chickens? It doesn't sound like you're gonna need those. Oh, sell off what I can and dine on the rest. Okay, and that's everything then. Um, I'll get the books up to date and I'll, and I'll give you a call. What about lunch? Sorry, Albert, I have eggs to deliver. I'm still a farmer, you know. Oh, there is one other thing, the boy's horse. Oh, I don't know, I, I thought Jake might take him. Maybe, <laughs> why don't we wait till after the race? Jake might not be so interested in the animal after I've taken his money. The race? Oh, gonna be a real special event. I hate to embarrass Ben, of course. This horse doesn't stand a chance against my pinto. I have to go, Albert. We'll see you at the race. Fever was slick as the wind today, Jake. Was he now? Yeah. We raced the Abercrombie boys after school, and I beat them both. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Ben, and I'll tell you why. This thing's leaking oil again. I don't know how much longer it's gonna last. I don't care about the cream separator, Jake. I want to hear about your bet with Albert. What about it? Why in the world would you agree to a race? What do you think that says to Ben? It says that sometimes when you get pushed, you gotta push back. I know all about your problem with Albert. Not with him. It's what he's doing. He's taking advantage of people when they're having hard times, when they're weak. You're wrong about Gate. He wanted to sell, and Albert gave him an excellent price. I'm not talking about Gate. Jake, I'm sorry. I didn't want to say anything until I was sure. You don't need to give me an explanation. Yes, I do. I should have told you that Albert offered to buy the farm. This is your home. The 
kid. How could you take all this away from him? If I do this, it'll be the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But there are other things. You think I don't know what life is like for you? You work day and night. No socializing unless the church or the school board needs you. You think my reasons for leaving are selfish? I don't need to do this. Julia, it's your farm. It's your life. And my son. That's right. So I'll just do my job. Jake. I know. I know that you promised Daniel you'd take care of us. And I know how many times through the years you wanted to leave, but you didn't because of that promise. You don't owe me nothing. Jake, you mean the world to Ben. But what I haven't let myself think about is how much he means to you. I'm sorry. Son, I'm glad you're home early. There's something I want to talk to you about. I bet I know. You're gonna say I can't race. That's right, but this is something else. Um, for a while now, I've been feeling, oh, I don't know, kind of like it, it was time for something new. Could use a new car. <laughs> That's not exactly it. It's just that there are there are things I want to do, exciting things, things that I know you'd love to do too. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell you is Albert Ricky wants to buy the farm, and so I'm thinking of selling it to him and moving back to Toronto. <laughs> you can't do that, Ma. This is Dad's farm. No, son, it's mine. But I don't want to move. Oh. I know it's scary at first. Moving could be a wonderful adventure. There's new places and there's new people. Nothing's more exciting than that. You've got cousins out in Toronto you've never even met yet. Your grandparents, Ben. You haven't seen them since your seventh birthday. Honey, we've got family out in Toronto. Here we have no one. That's not true, Ma. We've got Jake. It's not the same, Ben. This is my dad's farm. You think you don't remember him, but I do. Ben, you were too young. No, he used to carry me up on his shoulders, and once he did a, a magic trick, and made a penny come right out of my ear. Ben, let me try and explain to you. No! Ben! not true. You said you loved it here when I first brought you out. I said what you wanted me to say. I loved you. You stood right here, remember? You said you loved the smell of Wolf Willow. And that the metal arc song made your heart feel like it was gonna burst. And the wheat. You said the wheat was waving hello that it was the most welcoming sight you'd ever seen. I would have said anything then. This was your home. No, Julia. It's ours. It still is. Oh, 
go. That'll make him go fast. You pat him right there. Okay. <laughs> How is he? He'll be all right. About selling or not, now you do what you have to do, but the race means an awful lot to the boy. And I'm not saying it for me. Albert can call me a welcher if he wants to. It's not the worst thing I've ever been called, and it won't be the worst thing Albert's ever done. Why is it that even when you're absolutely right, I feel like you're putting something over on me? you're going to hold back because it's a long run. But you don't have to. You let Fever have his head because he's got lots of staying power. I know it, Jake. Boy. Ready? Yeah. Good. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I heard you might be selling this horse. Or I might buy it if it ran a decent race. Well, I'd rather see him fill in a bottle of glue. Good luck, Ben. Ride like the wind now. <laughs> Mount up! I hope you're not worried about the kid racing, Julia. Why should I be? He is the best rider in town. Of course, whatever you say. makes a horse slobber. When he swallows, it cuts off his wind, and you can't run without air in your lungs. Oh, well, how did it get there? <laughs> There's your answer. Come on. Albert, I can't believe even you would do something like this. How dare you try and cheat my son? And Jake. I don't know what you're talking about. Ask him. Tuvi, I know what you did. What? I didn't do nothing. Save your breath, mister. Now I'm going to give you five minutes to rest that horse ears, then we're racing again. I say that's up to Mr. Ricky. I say that's up to me. And when it's over, you're going to leave Crocus, forget the road you took to get here. You understand me? Fever's all right? It's fine, Julia. Let's show everyone what we Osborns are made of. 
Oké, okay, maar. See what you got, Tuvi. Set. All right, Ben. Go! I knew nothing about this. I do. <laughs> Let's put this unfortunate incident behind us, huh? You can't let it interfere with business. We don't have any business to discuss, Albert. We don't? Like I said, our farm's been in Daniel's family since 1872. It's gonna stay that way. Great race, Ben. <laughs> and you were great. Things seem to get back to normal after the race, except for one important change. Mom started playing the piano again, something she really hadn't done since Dad died. Jake was really happy in those days. Although he'd never talk about it, I knew how much it meant to him that Mom decided not to sell the farm. I think he was also glad that she'd gone back to playing the piano. I know I sure was. I believe that maybe she had finally started feeling about the prairie the way I did. But like me, she found it hard to explain, so she played it instead. Big sky and prairie sunsets. That's what her music sounded like to me then. And it still does. <laughs> <laughs> 